Hello, Francisco. Good evening, Maciel. How are you doing? Are you still driving? Are you already at home? Hi, Hi good evening, teacher. Hello. I am ready today. Excellent. But, uh, it's raining so hard here. Yes, it is raining here too, but we will do our best. Hello? We will do our best. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, for being on time. I know that Francisco is going to be just listening today. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, we'll start with you. And I have a question for you. Do you have a pet? Tell me again, please. Do you have a pet? Um, no. No? I no, I don't. No, I don't. Have you Only... ever had one? Yes, I had a, a little dog. A little dog, and what happened with it? Um, how do you say travieso? Oh, it was really naughty? <laughs> yes. Oh, it, so... It was very naughty, but uh, I had I had to... Uh, give another family because my son is is it's naughty uh, too <laughs> yeah oh okay i understand wow but for for now i don't know i don't know i don't have oh you don't have one oh sorry to hear that so um today we're going to start with that topic in particular because um yesterday was um uh, I was told that you wanted to to review the connectors, right? Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, we're going to start with that. Let me share screen with you just a little while. The word in the meeting chat. So if, in case do you want to take notes, <laughs> that's very useful. Okay, I'll start sharing. All right, this is the presentation I already sent and our today's review is going to be about connectors. Um, previously, we were studying connectors of contrast. We're going to study a little bit more about them. And a, I'm showing you a kind of dog. What kind of breed is that dog? That's a golden. That's my emotional support. <laughs> and in this reading, as you can see, we will be talking about it. And is there a volunteer to help me read in the first part of the paragraph? Alexis, welcome. I would like to read them. Sure, thank you so much, Martin. First paragraph. Please, uh-huh. Um, although? Although most of offer their other little more than companionship. Companionship? Companionship, sorry. Companionship. Assistance dogs are especially trained to assist people with disabilities or special needs. These dogs devote themselves to helping their owner's life live more in the Independent lives. Lives. Uh -huh. Lives. There are several types of assistance dogs, but the most common are feed dogs. How dogs? Uh -huh. Guide dogs. Guide, guide dogs. Uh huh. Hearing. Hearing dogs and service dogs. Uh huh. Guide dogs help blind or visual 
Blind. 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 Mm -hmm. blind. Help blind or visually impaired. It's okay? Yes, impaired. Impaired people get around their home and communities. Most guide guided with. Excellent. Yes, guide dogs. I must guide guide dog are large breeds Rich. like breeds. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So it says large. most guide dogs are breed large, like, large breed. Large breed like Le Labrador, Labrador retrievers, retrievers and German shepherd. Sheep. Shepherd, which were a hermes with a ill shape handle to walk, to allow the dog and its human partner to communicate. The owner gives directional commands, and the dog's role is the is to ensure the human safety, even if it means. This, uh, what, a, what is pronounced as for disobeying? Disobeying and use unsafe. Um, unsafe command. Herman, Herman dogs alert a person who is there. there. Death. Do you know what is death? 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 A death? What? Mm -hmm. It's a uh, sordo. Personas uh -huh. sordas is death. Death. Mm -hmm. Herning dogs alert a person who is deaf, deaf, or hearing impaired to sound like doorbells. Uh, baby cries. Baby cries. Baby, baby cries. So no, so gentle little baby. Babies cries, uh huh. And smoke alarms. They're trying to do the source on of the sound. Herning dogs may be any size or breed, but they tend to be a small to medium sized mixed breeds because they are rescued from shelter. Herning dogs can all be identified by their orange color and vest. Mm -hmm. Next part, service dog. Next part, service dog usually assist, assist people who are confident, confined, confined to a wheelchair. The dog are trying to pick up, pick up drop it object. Open, open and close door. Help and getting getting a person into into or out of the wheelchair, and find help when needed. Because many of these text tasks uh, require strength. Require strength. Most service dogs are large breed, such as. Golden or Labrador retrievers. These dogs usually wear a backpack, harness, or vest. Guide dogs, herning dogs, and service dogs have one thing in common. However, before being matched with a human partner, each type of assistance dog undergoes a one to two years training program. Once the dog and owner are matches, they begin to form to form a bond through with each other and often become an inseparable team. Okay, excellent. What do you think about the reading? Is the vocabulary easy? Um, there are any words near for me? Okay, which ones? Let's study vocabulary first. 
for example, com in the, in the first paragraph, mm -hmm. companionship. 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 What has been that? Compañía. Compañía. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Empire, visual empire, in the second paragraph. Okay, so guide dogs help blind or visually impaired people. Is it ciegos o que visualmente tienen como no, como viscos? Visco. <laughs> okay. Visual impaired. Um... Retrievers. Uh, this is the breed. Uh, es la raza. La uh, red retrievers. Uh -huh. a breed. Es raza. Uh -huh. Entonces ahí nos dice que la, la mayoría de, de perros son razas grandes. Large breeds like Labrador Retrievers and German Shepherds. This, this version or this version at the end of this paragraph. Ah, disobeying. Disobeying. Ah, disobeying, desobedecer. Desobedecer, okay. Mm -hmm. French mm -hmm. requires French. And which one is it? Um, in the second column, first paragraph. In the second column, and the hands because many of these tasks require require strength. Oh, many of these tasks. I don't see it. Um. Strange. Most service dogs are large breeds. Uh huh. It's in persons. Um. Okay. Después de, uh, después de disobeying an unsafe comment? No, the, uh, después de require. Does require strange. I don't know if it's correct pronounce. Strength, yes. S-T-R-E-N-G-T-H. Ah, fuerza. Fuerza. Ah, uh, require strange. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Yes, ajá, ya lo encontré. Los, because... <coughs> los backpacks son las mochilas, ¿verdad? Sí, entonces ahí nos dice que los service dogs usually assist people who are confined to a wheelchair, eh, los que están personas confinadas a una silla de ruedas. Y esto dice que uh, esas, esas actividades necesitan fuerza. This task requires strength. Most service dogs are large breed, por eso para muchos o la mayoría de perros de servicio son de raza grande, large breed. 
como un golden labrador o labrador retriever. Ajá. Uh -huh. Yes. They are very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Do you have any pets? Yes, I have a a, a golden retriever. Not really. <laughs> It's the lady on the first slide. <laughs> this uh, lady. <laughs> uh, this is your pet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's beautiful. Thank you. And she's very smart and uh, yes, it's like um they bring like a, a, a emotional support. It's um it brings a sense of happiness when I see her around the house. And my son thinks the same. They love her. Yes. <laughs> and there are service dogs that, that are trained to be emotional support. Mm -hmm. uh, how old is she? She's 10 months. How old is she, teacher? Uh, she's, go she's going to turn one year in September. She's a baby. <laughs> ah. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's 10 months now. Only this one? Yes, only one. <laughs> you have another pet? No, no, only that ah, dog. Well. Yes. Only that dog. And I heard that the service dogs might go or cost up to Two thousand five dollars. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, uh, that's the price. That at least in um, in I I I heard that in Washington, the I saw a service dog and I I I was talking with the owner, and that service dog costed the owner twenty. Five thousand dollars for the service uh, dog. Oh, uh, really? Yes, they are really expensive. But I don't know if the hearing dogs that are rescued that are rescued from shelters, será que los venden si son rescatados de refugios? Sería injusto. Yes. And as you can see in this paragraph, we um we can see like many connectors. Although it's one connector, it can begin a paragraph in in like like in this case. Um, can you find another connector? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. But it's a connector too. But. Mm -hmm. Because. However, I said however también. Before again. Once. One. Oh. Yes. Okay, so this is the topic for today. It's going to be about connectors. And before that, we have uh, this uh, practice about vocabulary and some listening. We have a uh, reading here about three famous animals. We have Ruby, the elephant, Bart, the bird, and Alex, the parrot. Have you heard about them? I have never heard about these animals. Hmm. Let's see, Ruby, the elephant, right? Let's read about Ruby. Ruby was one of many elephants that learned to paint at the Phoenix Zoo. Wherever there are elephants painting, people are fascinated. Ruby was 11 more intriguing because she chose her own colors 
When she painted, he works rates about what her works rates about five hundred thousand for the zoo. Wow, that's a lot of money. A volunteer to read about Bart the Bear. Again? For me, it's okay. Okay. But I don't know if the other uh, partner is available. Is anybody else available? Thank you, Mario. Bar to beer. Bar to beer was a nice food, Alaskan collective. When there was a group, it was raised by humans and trained to act in teams. Whenever actors worked with him, they were always present. He worked with stars such as Brad Pitt and Steven Seagal. Wow, oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Mario. Uh, volunteer to read about Alex? Me, teacher. Thank you, Abigail. Alex's name is usually meant Mentioned. 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 Whenever it's first talked about language used by animals, it is claimed that this African gray parrot or called the categorize. Categorize. Categorize about one hundred and fifty. One hundred fifty words. From numbers and distinguished color and shapes. He showed some of these skills on several natural shows on TV. Mm. Thank you so much, Abigail. Excellent. So, um, what do you think? Do you think that animals should be trained for entertainment? What do you think? Should animals be trained for entertainment? I think it is okay. Meanwhile, they are not uh, mistreated or Treated in a rude way. What about you? What do you think? Many zoos have been sued because of uh, uh, this practice, right? Because they train animals, but they use violence to teach them to do things. Yeah, teacher. Mm -hmm. Many people use mm -hmm. use the those animals to to circus. In circus, uh huh. And most of them suffer violence. Are violent, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, I, I think agree. it's it's not okay. No, it's not ethical. It's not okay. Good. Uh, now let us. Do this listening. We're going to practice listening with this article. Listen to the news reports about um, animals that help people. What kind of people does each animal help? Uh, for this part, we don't need to write anything before the listening. Just take notes about what kinds of people does each animal help. Okay. Do you have your paper and pen handy? Ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Let me share the
Okay, let's listen. Remember to take notes about what kind of people does each animal help. Unit 9, Nature. Lesson A, page 70. Exercise 2, Helping Hands. Part A. Listen to these news reports on animals that help people. What kinds of people does each animal help? 1. Helping Hands is an organization that trains monkeys to aid quadriplegics, people who are unable to use their arms or legs. These animals are able to perform easy but necessary tasks, such as turning electric switches on and off, fetching objects, and picking things up off the floor. They can even be taught to scratch an itch on someone's nose. How are they trained? The young monkeys are placed with foster families who love them, take care of them, and prepare them for their roles as helpers. When the monkeys are adults, they go back to the organization for more advanced training. Once the monkeys are placed with a quadriplegic, they can be helpful for many years. 2. These days, many nursing homes are discovering the powerful impact that animals, such as dogs, can have on their elderly residents. Owners bring in healthy dogs with good dispositions for weekly visits. Residents look forward to their arrival, often smiling and showing a true interest in the animals. They make more of an effort to walk or move their wheelchairs over to the dogs to pet them. This probably has a lot to do with the fact that dogs give everyone their attention, not caring about age, looks, or ability to speak. For some residents, it may spark fond memories of pets. The owners of the dogs also benefit from the experience. They see the happiness that volunteering their pets brings. Did you get the information? Or you want to listen one more time? Please, teacher. Okay, let's listen again. Unit 9, Nature. Lesson A, page 70. Exercise 2, Helping Hands. Part A. Listen to these news reports on animals that help people. What kinds of people does each animal help? 1. Helping Hands is an organization that trains monkeys to aid quadriplegics, people who are unable to use their arms or legs. These animals are able to perform easy but necessary tasks, such as turning electric switches on and off, fetching objects, and picking things up off the floor. They can even be taught to scratch an itch on someone's nose. How are they trained? The young monkeys are placed with foster families who love them, take care of them, and prepare them for their roles as helpers. When the monkeys are adults, they go back to the organization for more advanced training. Once the monkeys are placed with a quadriplegic, they can be helpful for many years. 2. These days, many nursing homes are discovering the powerful impact that animals, such as dogs, can have on their elderly residents. Owners bring in healthy dogs with good dispositions for weekly visits. Residents look forward to their arrival, often smiling and showing a true interest in the animals. They make more of an effort to walk or move their wheelchairs over to the dogs to pet them. This probably has a lot to do with the fact that dogs give everyone their attention, not caring about age, looks, or ability to speak. For some residents, it may spark fond memories of pets. The owners of the dogs also benefit from the experience. They see the happiness that volunteering their pets brings. Okay, what information do you get from the first animal? I just, I just the uh, number two. 
picking things up off the floor. Its animal is monkey. Okay, yes, the first animal is monkey. Excellent. What kind of people do they help? Nobody has that information? No, teacher. Okay. All right. We're going to listen one more time. Lo vamos a poner una vez más. Eh, ahorita estamos en la parte A. Solo tenemos que identificar qué tipo de animal es y a qué tipo de personas ayuda. Y luego vamos a movernos a la parte B. Okay, listen. Unit 9. Nature. Lesson A. Page 70. Exercise 2. Helping Hands. Part A. Listen to these news reports on animals that help people. What kinds of people does each animal help? 1. Helping Hands is an organization that trains monkeys to aid quadriplegics, people who are unable to use their arms or legs. These animals are able to perform easy, but necessary tasks, such as turning electric switches on and off, fetching objects, and picking things up off the floor. They can even be taught to scratch an itch on someone's nose. How are they trained? The young monkeys are placed with foster families who love them, take care of them, and prepare them for their roles as helpers. When the monkeys are adults, they go back to the organization for more advanced training. Once the monkeys are placed with a quadriplegic, they can be helpful for many years. 2. These days, many nursing homes are discovering the powerful impact that animals, such as dogs, can have on their elderly residents. Owners bring in healthy dogs with good dispositions for weekly visits. Residents look forward to their arrival, often smiling and showing a true interest in the animals. They make more of an effort to walk or move their wheelchairs over to the dogs to pet them. This probably has a lot to do with the fact that dogs give everyone their attention, not caring about age, looks, or ability to speak. For some residents, it may spark fond memories of pets. The owners of the dogs also benefit from the experience. They see the happiness that volunteering their pets brings. Okay, the first animal, Magdiel gave us the answer, is monkey. What kind of people do monkeys help? The people that use the wheelchair. Yes, quadriplegic people, people who cannot use their arms or legs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that monkey can use this, this switch. Yes, they no. can turn... Turn the switches on and off. The light. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Very good. Scratch, scratching on each nose. Yes, scratch on each nose. Imagine. <laughs> yes. Very good. Now, the second animal. What kind of animal was it? Dog. Dog. Excellent. And what kind of people do they help? Nobody got the answer. What kind of people do those cells help? Not sure. Not sure either. Elderly. Uh -huh. Personas Elderly. mayores. Ahí se los muestro en la pantalla, creo que uh -huh. pueden ver. Uh -huh. Those help elderly people in nursing homes. Uh -huh. Ayudan a personas mayores en asilos, nursing homes. Okay, so yes, we have the answer for number one. Monkeys help people who can't use arms and legs, quadriplegic. And dogs help elderly people in nursing home. Now, the next part of this listening, 
is the part B. We're going to listen one more time and you have to um to decide well to get the information and write how does each animal help the people? We're going to write M for monkeys, D for dogs, or MG for information not given. Um, right now, I'm going to give you time for you to write um, this. You can just um, draw the dash and then the numbers. Or if you want, if you are fast at writing, you can write the whole things. Number one, fetching objects. Two, picking things up off the floor. Three, helping them cross the street, taking them places, doing tricks to make them laugh, sparkling memories of pets, giving them something to take care of, scratching an itchy nose, giving them something to look forward to. Is there any question with the vocabulary? We are okay with this. I'll give you time to write on your notebooks and then we're going to listen and write. Mario gave us a couple of them and also um, Matiel, you, you mentioned that they can, ah, uh, pero no está la de los switch, <laughs> de los monkeys, and that they can uh, switch on and off. And Mario's talk about one that's scratching and itchy nose. ¿Quiénes se ayudaban con eso? M or D? M yes. for monkey? M. Monkeys. Uh -huh. M. Ahí ya tienen la ocho. M, scratching and itchy nose. Algo se van a hacer cuando estén listos me dejan saber para poner el audio. Mama? Ready, teacher. Ready? Okay. So we're going to listen and remember that we're going to write M for monkeys, D for dog, and G for information not given. And let me see, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure in sound. So here we go. Page 70, exercise two. Helping Hands, Part B. Listen again. How does each animal help the people? Write M for monkey, D for dog, or NG for information not given. 1. Helping Hands is an organization that trains monkeys to aid quadriplegics, people who are unable to use their arms or legs. These animals are able to perform easy but necessary tasks, such as turning electric switches on and off, fetching objects, and picking things up off the floor. They can even be taught to scratch an itch on someone's nose. How are they trained? The young monkeys are placed with foster families who love them, take care of them, and prepare them for their roles as helpers. When the monkeys are adults, they go back to the organization for more advanced training. Once the monkeys are placed with a quadriplegic, 
they can be helpful for many years. 2. These days, many nursing homes are discovering the powerful impact that animals, such as dogs, can have on their elderly residents. Owners bring in healthy dogs with good dispositions for weekly visits. Residents look forward to their arrival, often smiling and showing a true interest in the animals. They make more of an effort to walk or move their wheelchairs over to the dogs to pet them. This probably has a lot to do with the fact that dogs give everyone their attention, not caring about age, looks, or ability to speak. For some residents, it may spark fond memories of pets. The owners of the dogs also benefit from the experience. They see the happiness that volunteering their pets brings. Okay, you want to listen one more time or you get the, all the answers? One more time, please. No. Okay. Page 70, Exercise 2, Helping Hands, Part B. Listen again. How does each animal help the people? Write M for monkey, D for dog, or NG for information not given. 1. Helping Hands is an organization that trains monkeys to aid quadriplegics, people who are unable to use their arms or legs. These animals are able to perform easy but necessary tasks, such as turning electric switches on and off, fetching objects, and picking things up off the floor. They can even be taught to scratch an itch on someone's nose. How are they trained? The young monkeys are placed with foster families who love them, take care of them, and prepare them for their roles as helpers. When the monkeys are adults, they go back to the organization for more advanced training. Once the monkeys are placed with a quadriplegic, they can be helpful for many years. 2. These days, many nursing homes are discovering the powerful impact that animals, such as dogs, can have on their elderly residents. Owners bring in healthy dogs with good dispositions for weekly visits. Residents look forward to their arrival, often smiling and showing a true interest in the animals. They make more of an effort to walk or move their wheelchairs over to the dogs to pet them. This probably has a lot to do with the fact that dogs give everyone their attention, not caring about age, looks, or ability to speak. For some residents, it may spark fond memories of pets. The owners of the dogs also benefit from the experience. They see the happiness that volunteering their pets brings. Okay, let's check your answer. Number one, fetching objects. Monkey. Monkeys, excellent. Picking things up off the floor. Monkeys. Monkeys, very good. Helping them to cross the street? Dogs. Bees. Not given. Number three is information not given. Mm -hmm. Taking them places? Monkeys. Not given. Number five, doing tricks to make them laugh. Okay. Not given. Number Dog. six. Dog. 
Yes, dog. Giving them something to care, take care of? It's a very simple. Number seven? Dog. Uh, not given. <laughs> Number eight, scratching an itchy nose. Esa ya la bien teníamos, gracias a Mario. Es monkey. Yeah. <laughs> and giving them something to look forward to. Is the dogs. Dogs. Okay. Now that we have completed this listening part, let's see. Okay, we have uh, this grammar, and um, as you could see in the previous exercise, well, we read it, we listen the words whenever, wherever, um, and this is can be contrasted with when and where. When? Whenever, when, whatever. Okay, so let's read. Whenever and whenever mean at any time in and in any place. Okay, entonces sería whenever, whenever. Whenever significa at any time, como decir cuando sea. Y whatever in any place. Sería como decir, donde sea. And they are introduced to, uh, they are used to introduce adverbial clauses. And we're going to notice their position in the sentences. Let's see. Whenever expert talk about language used by animal, Alex's name is usually mentioned. Alex's name is usually mentioned. Whenever experts talk about language used by animals. Wherever there are elephants painting, people are fascinated. People are fascinated wherever there are elephants painting. Como pueden ver, whenever and wherever pueden iniciar, pueden ir al inicio o pueden ir um, como o se pueden eh, intercambiar, ¿verdad? De puestos. O aquí tenemos whenever al principio y luego lo tenemos eh, para introducir qué tipo de oración. Ok, si decimos aquí Alex name is mentioned, esta digamos que es como independiente porque tiene sentido ella sola. Entonces, para introducir la cláusula dependiente, ¿ok? Que es, so, quedaría incompleto si solo decimos, whatever expert talk about language used by animals, ¿qué pasa? Entonces, puede, puede hacerlo de cualquiera de las dos formas. Pero si ella va al principio, whatever o whenever, vamos a usar coma para separar las dos oraciones. Al caso contrario, no se usa la coma. Si ven esto, nada más en cuanto a puntuación, escritura. Y bien, vamos a when and where. Can replace whenever and wherever when they have the sense of any time or in any place. Esto nos explica que when y where pueden reemplazar whenever y wherever cuando tienen el mismo sentido de en cualquier momento o en cualquier lugar. Por ejemplo, podemos decir, whenever actors work with Bart the Bird, they, are, they were always impressed. O, when actors work with Bart the Bird, they were always impressed. Ahí se puede intercambiar, se podemos usar when o whenever, porque estamos hablando de eh, cuando sea, ¿verdad? En cualquier... Eh, y también abajo la de whatever, que sería cuando sea, 
o when, cuándo. Entonces ahí pues es indiferente, puede usar cualquiera de las dos. Siempre y cuando tengan un sentido de cuando sea o donde sea. Ahora, veamos la excepción. Whenever y wherever cannot be used if the sentence refers to a specific time or location. Entonces, si la oración se refiere a un tiempo específico o a un lugar específico, no podemos usar whenever o wherever. Solo podemos usar when o where. Cuando se refiere a un lugar o tiempo específico, Ahí sí, solo es when o where. ¿Quedamos eh, claros con esta parte? De este grammar chart. De estos connectors. Yes or no. I think the silencio es yes. <laughs> ok, so... We are going to complete the sentences here with whenever or wherever. If the time or place is specific, use when or where. Lo que acabamos de mencionar, ¿verdad? Vamos a usar whenever o wherever cuando sea el sentido de la oración en cualquier lugar, en cualquier momento, cuando sea o donde sea. Pero si es algo específico, entonces vamos a usar when o where. You can do it in your notebook. So, for example, it says number one, large animals like tigers and birds need to be trained. They are still young. Sería whenever or when? It's when? When, when. Uh -huh. when, excellent, Elizabeth, because it's, it's specific, ¿verdad? No puede ser cuando sea que sean muy jóvenes. So now, when they are still very young. Now that we did the number one together, you can continue with the rest of them. And let me know whenever you're ready. <laughs>
Okay, good. We're going to check your answers. So for number one, we said when large animals like tigers and birds need to be trained when they are still very young. Number two, a volunteer. I feel whenever. Whenever. Yes. The large. Whatever, uh huh. Whatever with directions, excellent. Through large trained elephants are obedient, they will usually go wherever they are led. Excellent. Number three. Whenever. Whenever someone has an unusual pet. Excellent. Serious problems can arise. Excellent. That's correct. Whenever. Uh, number four. Whenever. Whatever. Whatever. Um, whatever or whenever. Wherever. You see. A cat flooded its ears. You should assume it's upset. Uh huh. Whenever. Uh huh. When it whenever is siempre cuando sea es como de tiempo y where es donde. Pero sí se presta a confundirse la oración porque si es cuando sea o donde sea que veas un gato. Haciendo eso con las orejas. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, but it is whenever, cuando sea que veas un gato. Como no sé cómo sería eso. Five. What do you have for number five? Where. Where, excellent. Where my sister and her family live now, tenants aren't allowed to have pets. Number six. When? I whenever. Whenever. <laughs> yes. Whenever a messenger pigeon is taken somewhere and released, it almost always finds its way, way home. Mm -hmm. Pichet, yes. La traducción de whenever en español sería casi siempre o casi nunca. Mm, whenever es donde sea. Ah, o entonces... cuando, no, per, perdón. When, whenever, que es como decir cuando, cuando sea. Cuando, ah, okay. whenever. Donde sea. Wherever es, ajá, siempre re refiriéndose a un, un lugar, pero digamos no específico. Wherever, donde sea. Okay. Sí, es que yo lo había traducido con el never y eso me había confundido. Uh -huh. Sí, en, en whenever es when, como de tiempo, pero no es definido, es como okay. donde sea. Perdón, cuando sea que when y where es como que se me cruzan. Ajá, pero when es siempre de tiempo. Whenever sería cuando sea. Whenever. En cualquier oh momento. Ajá. Y si es bien específico, entonces solo se puede usar when. El tiempo, como por ejemplo en ese tiempo que los eh, animales son a un joven, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí es, sí es un tiempo específico, when. 
Um, eh, ajá. Y la where siempre, siempre es where como de algún lugar, pero si es como no es específico y queremos decir donde sea, es wherever. ¿Ya? Hoy sí quedó más claro. Yes, teacher. Ok, good. Y perdón que me pase igual, como son tan parecidos, me equivoco cuando los estoy traduciendo. Whenever y whatever. <laughs> But that happens. Let's see. We're going to check attendance before we forget. Many people is missing today. Something happens on Fridays. Abigail Elizabeth. Present teacher. Thank you. Abigail Mejia. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Alberto Castro. Carlos Emilio Present. Coto. Thank you. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Um, Cecia Noemi. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco. Francisco hoy solo como oyente dijo que estaba en el trabajo. Okay. Uh, Gerson Alexis. Gertrudis Aymara. No se iba a conectar ahora, dijo trabajo. Hazel Vanessa. Yulisa Yamile. Carla Ivania. Carla Ivania. Luis Javier. Magdiel Esaú. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Mario Ernesto. Yes. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Samuel Antonio. Santos Cristina. Present teacher. Present. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, let me continue sharing. The last exercise for this section is start sharing again. Okay, and in this, we're going to match the clauses. Cuando dice clauses, se refiere a la oración. Eh, de la izquierda con la de la derecha, haciendo oraciones lógicas. Vamos a, ajá, hay que unirlas a que tengan lógica. Y aparte, hay que ver si le vamos a poner when, whenever, where, o Wherever, como ya vimos, ¿verdad? Que si es algo específico en algún momento o tiempo específico, entonces ahí solamente podemos usar where o when. 
Y luego, si pues no es específico ni el tiempo ni el lugar, podemos decir whenever o wherever. Y nos quedaría como el ejemplo que está hecho para nuestro, para que nos ilustremos mejor. Number one, we were very certain last night. Se une con el sí. A bat flew into the window. Entonces, we were very sad last night when a bat flew into the window. Es que hasta la uno hecha y tenemos cinco más para trabajar.
Finish. Okay, do we have a volunteer for number two? Parents become very sad. Anybody has the number two? Parents become very sad. They are separate from their owners. Yes, it is letter F. Parents become very sad and uh, did you use when whenever ahí podría ser cualquiera de los dos parrots become very sad when they are separated from their owners or that could be parrots become very sad whenever they are separated from their owners. Thank you so much. Number three. I volunteer for number three. The ship population grows quickly. The ship's population grows quickly. The chief population runs quickly whenever the traffic light is red. Um, Letter D. There is plenty. The sheep population grows quickly where or wherever there is plenty of grass to eat. Thank you so much. Number four, a guide dog always stops 
A guide dog always stops. Number four is A. A guy, the dog, always stops when or whenever the traffic light is red. Number five. Does anybody have number five? Police officer of Nero B. Cars can conveniently go where, whenever. Yes. Very good. Thank you so much. Police officers ride horses where cars can't conveniently go or whatever. That's okay. Thank you so much. And the last one, number six, would be letter E. Our helper monkey wets up, up when the sun turns up in the morning. Our helper monkey wakes us up when the sun comes up in the morning. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing this. Yeah, I see that many of you are having issues with the, with the electricity, you're experiencing power outages, but thank you so much for keeping Brian. And then um, I also shared with you a worksheet. Just let me share it here. Linking words. I, I sent this document as, uh, as soon as I could before the class con uh, start. Se las mandé tan pronto como pude antes de empezar la clase. Eh, las linking words. Que era lo que estábamos estudiando y sabemos que hay de varios tipos, right? Linking words and we have a drawing here. Este, aquí en este material lo tenemos en español y están traducidas las linking words. Que bueno, para ahorita estaríamos con, como las más comunes. Eh, se llaman linking words o las palabras que utilizamos para relacionar ideas o conceptos dentro de una misma oración o un párrafo, aunque no seas consciente y seguro de que ya conoces un montón. And, but, because, y todas esas son linking words. Las linking words nos ayudan a ordenar ideas, enfatizar conceptos, empezar un resultado o conclusión. Vamos, que son un elemento importantísimo a la hora de expresarnos eh, de forma un poco más completa en inglés. De la misma manera, usarlas incorrectamente puede producir malos entendidos. Por eso hay que dominarlas para comunicarlos bien en inglés. No olvides inscribirlas en tus escrituras. Eh, además, ayudarte a organizar tu escrito, ayudarás al corrector a entender tus ideas y demostrarás un conocimiento más profundo del idioma. Uh, y luego de la introducción tenemos las linking words más usadas, eh, and, que significa y, ahí tenemos el, 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 um, el, en español que significa, aunque creo que también eso nos dio un poquito de problemas, quizás que no tenemos muy claro qué significa cada una de ellas para poder utilizarlas, and, que es lo más común, lo más fácil, que significa y, esas las utilizamos para agregar información, ¿verdad? She sat down, opened the grammar book, and began to study. Eh, although significa aunque o a pesar de que. Es como un, una de contraste, ¿verdad? Eso es, pone ideas como opuestas juntas, although. Y el significado es aunque y a pesar de que. 
Y tenemos el ejemplo, although he spoke English fluently, he needed to improve his writing. Aunque hablaba inglés muy fluido, tenía que mejorar su escritura. As, que es como o igual, I want to study medicine as my mother did. Mm, qué bonito se escucha eso. O sea, es como para, como dice ahí, escuchar con un inglés más avanzado. Um, this is like comparison because, porque eh, Juan passes his exam because he had been practicing a lot. But, es pero, pero, un contraste, ¿verdad? Una idea opuesta. I'd love to live in London, but it's too expensive. If es sí, ahí lo tenemos. Eh, eh. If sí, pero no es un sí de aprobación, sino que es una condición. I'd buy a penthouse in, Catherine, in central London if we were rich. La condición para que compremos un penthouse en Londres es si fuéramos ricos. Eh, or, significa o, oh, would you go out or stay in tonight? Y aquí pues tenemos eh, eh, separadas linking words para añadir comentarios un, o ideas. Es, tenemos also, que significa también moreover, es más o además. Furthermore, también significa además, moreover and furthermore son eh, synonyms. Then, que significa entonces, besides, además, to, también, similarly, de forma similar, indeed, en efecto. Linking words de tiempo. Las utilizamos para determinar en el tiempo que se produce una acción. Tenemos, por ejemplo, when, cuando, whenever, cuando sea, en cualquier momento, que es la que estábamos practicando, before, antes, after, después, since, desde, until, hasta, while, mientras. Linking words de contraste, también tenemos la de contraste. Eh, como por ejemplo algunas serían by contrast significa en cambio although a pesar de que compare with comparado con conversely por el contrario despite a pesar de however sin embargo nevertheless a pesar de nonetheless sin embargo yet aún así instead en vez de. Esas son para contraste, ideas opuestas. Linking word de resultado. Veamos las linking word de resultado o efecto. Las, expresa, las utilizamos para expresar el resultado o la conclusión de un concepto anterior. We have therefore, por lo tanto, accordingly, respectivamente, as a result of, como resultado de, y thus. Por consiguiente. Tenemos la de secuencia, que es como para dar un orden, para ordenar conceptos, secuencias, instrucciones. First or firstly, que es primero. Second, secondly, en segundo lugar. Third, thirdly, en tercer lugar. Last. Lastly, last of all, por último, las de jerarquización. A ver, jerarquización. Las utilizamos para poner en orden de importancia las ideas de nuestro discurso. Essentially, esencialmente, basically, básicamente, most importantly, lo principal, above all, por encima de todo. Para practicar con estos linking words, tienen este ejercicio y esto es un documento de Word que les mandé antes de la clase. Lo mandé al WhatsApp. Entonces, si ustedes gustan, lo pueden abrir, lo pueden descargar y pueden eh, revisarlo 
detenidamente para que puedan eh, responder aquí. Completa las siguientes oraciones con la linking word correspondiente. Call me, you get home. She has saved a lot of money. She, got, she gave up smoking. I worked very hard. I failed the exam. As she studied hard, she passed the exam with merit. I don't feel like going to the cinema. Why don't we stay in? It's great professional, but they're a very nice person. If not there, it's lost. In today's meeting, we'll be discussing this year results. I'm not leaving. You finish your homework. She is a lovely girl. Vamos a ir completando con los linking words o los connectors, dependiendo de qué es lo que se está expresando, ¿verdad? Y son los que les leí anteriormente en el mismo documento.
Okay, number one, volunteer, call me. Call me. Please tell me when you get home. Excellent. Thank you so much. Call me when you get home. Number number two. She has saved a saved a lot a lot of money since she gave up smoking. Excellent. See, he gave up smoking. And number three. I told Although, although, yes, can be although. Although I work very hard. I mm -hmm. failed. Although I work very hard, I failed the exam. Oh, podría ser también despite, si alguien tiene despite. That's okay. Thank you so much. He studied hard. Number four. And she passed the exam with Nate. She is studying hard, therefore she passed the exam with Yes. Therefore. Mm -hmm. Therefore. She passed the exam with Mary. I don't feel like going to the cinema. Why don't we stay in? Instead. Number six, he's a great professional, but he's a very nice person. Nobody has number six. He's a great professional, but he's a very nice person. <laughs> Above all. Excellent. Above all. About all, he's a very nice person. It's not there. If it is not there, number seven, if it is not there. If it then is it's not a lot. There, then it's excellent. Lot. Then it's plus. Number eight. In today's meeting, we'll be discussing this new year this year's result that can be first or firstly number nine i'm not leaving you finish your homework i'm good. Excellent. Until until you finish your homework, and she is number indeed. ten. Indeed. indeed, indeed, yes, she's indeed a lovely girl. Thank you so much. Well, with this, we finish and our review for today for the connectors. I know there is a lot of work to do with connectors. Would that be okay if we continue this topic on Monday or we switch to a different thing? What do you think? Can we continue with this on Monday or we switch to a different thing? Monday is our last class for this module. El lunes sería nuestra última clase. Eh, estaría bien seguir con el, la práctica de los connectors, 
O oh, quieren que cambiemos algo otro tema que sientan dificultades todavía. Okay, I will decide. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful weekend and see you on Monday. See you on Monday, teacher. Bye. Bye, take care. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend for you too.